Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Friday the 6th of May and I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. Do comment, let me know you're here. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We use one of the day's Bible readings um, and a reflection on that reading. On a Friday, the overarching theme for prayer is the cross. And so we pause and we pray. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And the psalm today is Psalm 31. Lord, make haste to deliver me. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Lord, make haste to deliver me. And today we return to St Luke's Gospel, to Luke chapter 2. Picking up again where we left off yesterday, Luke chapter 2, verse 1. A very famous passage. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they'd heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. It's a very famous passage and interesting to hear it in a different context in May. So let me read a reflection on those words written this week for us by the Reverend Joanna Collicutt. She says the shepherds undergo an experience that exceeds their imaginative capacity, but is so compelling they cannot resist, deny or disregard it. Instead, they're traumatised. Psychological trauma is, by definition, something that violently breaks down our defences and allows mighty dread to seize our troubled mind. This is why the angels' first words are necessary – don't be afraid. The facts are friendly. But what are these friendly facts? The coming of the Messiah? A baby in a manger? The clue is in the song of the angelic choir that forms the basis of what we now know as the Gloria. It tells of peace and reconciliation between God and human beings. Hence the placement of the Gloria after the confession and absolution in the Holy Communion service. As verse 10 indicates, this peace includes all the people, a fitting message for shepherds who existed on the margins of respectable society. This is not merely the weaker, negative peace that comes from letting go past sins and offences. 
It's the complete harmony and well-being of shalom, in which God is seen positively to delight in humankind. Whilst verse 14 is difficult to translate because the Greek is ambiguous and varies between manuscripts, the best reading is probably peace among human beings, they're pleasing to him. This is where the baby comes in, for it is in and through this fully human being, my son, the beloved, that God says to each of us, with you, I am well pleased. That's the good news of great joy for all the people. Peace among human beings, they're pleasing to him. What a lovely way of translating those words. And so we pray, beginning with this week's collect. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we continue in prayer. To your cross, O Lord, we come for healing. We come with the broken hearted and broken spirited. We come with those with broken relationships. We come with the broken in body or in mind. We come with the weak and the disabled. We come with sinners and the guilty. To your cross, O Lord, we come for healing. By the nails through your hands and feet, give comfort to the suffering. By the crown of thorns upon your head, give hope to the despairing. By the spear that pierced your side, give courage to the heartbroken. By your being scorned and rejected, give love to the lonely. By your time of desolation, lift up all who are down. By your death on the cross, give us life, which is eternal. Hear us, O Lord. And we pray for Ukraine. God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the war in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. We mourn every casualty in this conflict, every precious life extinguished by war. We pray comfort for those who grieve and those who are fearful. Hear our longing that leaders and nations will honour the worth of all people by having the courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. May all our human failings be transformed by your wonderful grace and goodness. We ask this in the name of Christ, the author of peace and sustainer of creation. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to you, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have won for me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day. And so, Lord, by your passion, protect us. By your wounds, heal us. By your death, raise us up and bring us to life eternal. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for prayer today and through this week. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, we'll be back here for prayer on Monday at 9.45 and there is a service in the church at 10.30 on Sunday morning. So hopefully see you soon. Take care and God bless. Bye for now.